This video is about power and energy. Power P is the time rate of change of work. So you have the work W over T. And conversely, work is the integral of power. And work is, uh, is the energy gained or dissipated or exchanged in a system. And here you see the work expressed as the integral of power, but the work can also be expressed as the work done by a force. So here you have a position vector from T0 to T1. You take the integral of a force F, the product, with the position. And then this is equal to, if you do it over time, the rate of change, the position there, which is the velocity, and you get that expression. And this uh, can be seen to give the power, which is F dot product of the velocity. Principles of energy can be used as a reality check when you're simulating. Because if we define the total energy of a system to be made up of kinetic energy and potential energy V, we can simulate the system and see if energy is dissipated or if it stays constant and if that is uh, in line with what we expect. We know for a conservative system that the change in total energy, this E here, is um, zero. So over time you will see if you plot something the kinetic energy might go up and down. So kinetic energy, this is time. Um, the potential energy will follow the same pattern but exactly opposite. Uh, do I do this? Something like this and the two added up together will stay constant. So if you know that in your system there are only conservative forces and you see that the energy that you calculate stays the same, it's a nice check to uh, see if your simulations make sense. On the other hand, non-conservative systems if there you plot uh, the energies over time you might see that the total energy is lost due to damping forces or friction forces or drag for example or that if an motor is applied at some point the total energy in the system goes up again and you see fluctuations in this total energy. So the total energy of a system is made up of a kinetic part and a potential part. Now what are these kinetic and potential parts? Let's start off with kinetic energy. For a body, uh, which I label here B, we can find the kinetic energy as the energy of the mass M here, uh, moving with a velocity V, and if we take the, that V squared 
or the square of the magnitude of the V which equals to this dot product uh, we see that one part of the kinetic energy is made of a translational motion here but the total kinetic energy also includes energy related to the rotational motion and the expression for that comes down to the angular velocity dot product with the inertia dyadic and then the product with again the angular velocity of B now in general we can say that the work done on a system equals the change in kinetic energy next to this kinetic energy we can put the potential energy which is related to conservative forces and a conservative force can be shown to be equal to the negative of the partial derivatives of all the generalized coordinates uh, to the potential function phi which can also be written as the force that is conservative is equal to the negative gradient of V and for such a conservative system we already saw that the difference in kinetic energy plus the difference in potential energy equals zero so let me add to this Now next to the kinetic and potential energy, or on top of that, and better speaking, we also have non-conservative forces that can dissipate energy or actually put extra energy into the system. Uh, an example of something that puts extra energy in the system is a motor, and friction or drag or damping are examples or of uh, elements that take energy out of the system. Now I will go a bit deeper into the potential energy by giving two examples. Um, and the first one is gravitational energy. Um, to do that I will start off with drawing a coordinate system made up of n y x and z and I call this point O and in that coordinate system I create a reference point which I call R not to be confused with a radius R and somewhere I have a center of mass A0 and I draw a gravitational acceleration vector which I call capital G now what is this gravitational acceleration vector this G in M it is a vector and it's made of components GX, GY, GZ and this vector can point in any direction in our inertial frame but uh, often 
we cho choose the frame so or uh, rotate it in such a way that it is aligned with one of the axes so often you see that this vector is something like this 0 0 minus G but it doesn't necessarily need to be this it can be pointed in any direction along any X axis now what we further need is a position vector of our center of mass a0 a o sorry with respect to the reference and that is made up of a vector that points from our point O towards the center of mass so to be complete I can put the big O here in our initial frame minus the position factor of R And this is most likely a vector that looks like x minus some reference 0, y minus 0, z minus z0. And this is in Cartesian coordinates. Now this gravitational vector g it makes a force F G A, let's call it. The line is not so clear, but this line is parallel to the gravitational acceleration. And that force G A in the M frame is the mass of A times that gravitational acceleration vector. And to find a potential function that uh, goes with this conservative force, we need to find the negative gradient And we need to find the potential function that if you take the negative gradient of that, we come again to our fg vector. And it turns out that such a potential function is vg dot product. with our position factor of the center of mass plus some integration constant because you find that you can find this equation by integrating the uh, force vector fg now this one uh, this last formula of the potential energy is zero at the reference R. And I should further note that often in examples uh, that we see in real life, so often, but not necessarily we see that we take x o y o and z o to be zero just by choosing the reference uh, in a convenient location but this is not necessarily needed here you can see the the most general case of uh, gravitational energy so with a gravitational acceleration that points in any direction 
and with a reference that is not necessarily in the origin of your complete system. Another example of where we have potential energy is a spring. And to explain how we can get the potential function of a spring, I start again with some inertial frame and x and y z. Let's also give this a name O. And we have a point A and a point B. And in between these two points, we have a spring with some length L0. And in this case, we see that uh, point A and B are so far apart that the spring is bigger than L0. So in this case, if we would draw a free body diagram on B, we would see that there would be a spring force Fs on B. And this spring force is parallel to the spring. Now, to get an expression for the spring force, we first find a vector that lies in the direction of the spring. So in this case, I choose position vector of B, subtract the position vector of A from that, and I call that vector S. And to find the uh, vector of the spring force, we first determine its magnitude, which is um, k times the magnitude of that s vector minus l zero. So this is the elongation of the spring times the spring constant k. And we see that it's in, uh, and we project that, sorry, we project that on the direction of s. And this direction can be found by normalizing that s vector. But we see that if we stretch the spring, B gets further away from A, uh, Fs works against the direction of where S, uh, the S vector points, so we add a negative sign there. And this is the expression for the vector of the spring force. Now we know that to find the potential, so we this potential is the negative gradient of that force Fs, which gives us a potential function that is half times k times plus some integration constant. And this is our potential function of a spring.